The attraction for me was David Milch's brilliant writing. I don't trust anyone, not even myself. It's immersion into a total world, not just of horse racing, but of luck combined with skill that can have the power to change our lives. Go get him, Jock. The racetrack is a place of incomparable beauty, but uh, it's a rough racket. Don't chirp about what ain't your business. As a setting or for storytelling, you couldn't ask for anything more. Here's my picks. Hey, this is everything from degenerate gamblers to a disreputable trainer to Ace Bernstein, played by Dustin Hoffman. I think I played it OK. Ace is a centered, powerful, organized crime figure, which is a character Dustin really hasn't played before. You got qualms? I cast Nick Nolte, who plays the Kentucky trainer with a lot of mileage on him and a shadowy past. Guess I still know a peach when I see one. And he's going to have a second chance. Action! Most of the crew and I worked together on numerous films before Locke, going back 10, 15 years. We're motivated by the challenge of innovation. And the horse racing is not to observe the racing, but to place the audience within the experience. Go! That's a rush. Welcome to a Luck Pick 6 special edition of The Edge. I'm Kurt Hoover. Thanks for taking time out from your busy Friday evening to join us as we take an in-depth look at the Luck Pick 6. Three from Goldstream, three from Santa Anita on Saturday, and on Sunday, HBO premiere of Luck kicks things off. Joining me to help take a look at the card, Brad Free. And Brad, a couple scratches tomorrow really changed the Pick 6, and there's no carryover. The Pick 6 was not hit today at Santa Anita, but that carries to Sunday. 239000 to Sunday. Tomorrow's a standalone pool. Stand Standalone pool on carry on Saturday. It's the Luck Pick Six. It's a one dollar wager on Saturday. Keep some bullets in your pocket for Sunday too, because there's a giant carryover on Sunday. But a one dollar Pick Six, three stakes at Santa Anita, three stakes at Gulfstream Park, and looking forward to uh, attacking them all. And it's uh, one payout, no consolation payout, pays just to six in the Pick Six pool, guaranteed at a quarter million dollars. That is tomorrow at an early first post on Sunshine Millions Day at 12 noon at Santa. Yeah, Brad, for more on Facebook, you are on that a lot more than I am. What's going on there? I spent at least a half hour on Facebook <laughs> this afternoon. It's the, half, the only 30 minutes I've spent on Facebook <laughs> all week checking out the luck page. And there's a lot to look forward to. There's a contest. And if you think you can pick six consecutive winners, hey, they're putting up $50,000. So you got to take a shot. Go to Facebook, do a search for luck and boom, you're right there. And that's the luck page. And you have a chance to win $50,000 if you can pick the winner of six consecutive stakes races. And that's what we're here to do. Yeah, Kurt, we're going to try. It. Those pick six races will be shown on the website, on the Luck website tomorrow. All six involved in the pick six. I can tell you how it is here in Southern California. Picture perfect. It's spring slash summer like weather at the end of January, up around 80 degrees yesterday. Same today, same tomorrow. Not a surprise in Florida, maybe some scattered thunderstorms, but so far the last couple of days, weather been good down there too, Brad. Yeah, it has been. It's been gorgeous out in California. It's going to be nice and warm down in Florida, and it's a good thing because there are some terrific races at Santa Anita and Gulfstream Park. Not only the Sunshine Millions, but some good mm -hmm. supporting stakes surrounding them. Sunshine Millions, Philly and Mare Turf kicks off the pick six at Gulfstream. Then we go back to Santa Anita for the sensational star, absent Cara Cortado. Back to Gulfstream Park for the turf race with little Mike the favorite, Crystal Water, Long on the main track, Sunshine Millions Classic down in Florida, and we end it with the Valentine Dancer. Phillies and Mares long on grass. This uh, pick six sequence will be completed in less than an hour and a half, so it's going to move tomorrow about 1 o'clock, kickoff for the pick six. First up is the Philly and Mare Turf. That's at Gulfstream, $150,000 purse. Five to two choice, unbridled humor. Brad, how do you see the Philly and Mare turf at Gulfstream? Well, I loved unbridled humor when she shipped out here with Graham Motion last fall for the grade one matriarch, and she basically laid an egg. She did not fire her best shot. She finished in lackluster fourth. Maybe she just wasn't good enough. She is a grade three caliber mare, and two days after that disappointing fourth place finish in the matriarch, Motion said, well, we're just going to regroup, and we're going to drop her in to go against Florida Breds in the Sunshine Millions Philly and Mare Turf. Here we are, and and uh, Unbridled Humor is definitely the horse to beat. She's the class of the field. This is the race she's been targeting for some time. Can you trust her to short price? No, you really can't. She has some idiosyncrasies. She's very difficult to train. She has a mind of her own. Sometimes she doesn't want to go to the track. Sometimes she does. She's the best filly in the race if she shows up. 
but I don't trust her to at five to two, and therefore this race has to be at least a double for me. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of a price play, and her name is Speakeasy Gal. She's down on the rail. She has a chance to possibly make the lead. This mile and one eighth race is not going to unfold at a fast clip. We know where Speakeasy Easy Gal will be. She'll be on the front end. She's been involved in five photo finishes in her career. She's won four of them. And let's take a look at a recent race by Speakeasy Gal. This is last time out, and that's her on the lead. And here comes Snowtop Mountain on the outside, three wide. It looks like she's just going to blow right past Speakeasy Gal. But Speakeasy Gal does what she does best. Dig in, reach down deep, and find more, in the words of Trevor Denman. And Speakeasy Gal is going to hold off Snowtop Mountain. And she held her off not only to the wire, but even on the gallop out. Speakeasy Gal is a front runner who refuses to get passed in the lane. I love that tenacity. I love that fight. More so, I love the price. 12 to 1. It's unbridled humor, the most likely winner, but you have to use that long shot front runner, Speakeasy Gal, because she is tough, tough to beat. Yeah, very interesting race to start the pick six sequence. That's at Gulfstream. Then we move back to Santanita for the first leg here at Santanita. It's a sensational star. It is the fourth race on the card tomorrow, and a very important scratch changes the complexion of this race. Forget Caracatado. He is out. So Caracatado is scratched. He will not run. Mega Heat will not run. Scratch Caracatado, scratch Mega Heat. Neither one of those two will run in tomorrow's Sensational Star. That's going to make a very short price favorite, and I think rightfully so. Campari, a real nice California bread, comes off a good win over the course. He's five for six over the Santana turf course, and he has one on the downhill course. In two starts, he has one win. He's going to be even money or less with the scratch of Caracatado. Let's take a look at his last race here, his first start of the meet at Santanita. A good win by Campari. This is going a mile on January 5th against uh, two sharp horses, Willie Conker and Ogato Malo. <clears throat> Campari kicks clear, comes away to a nice score, holds off all threats down the lane as odds of four to five. Very good race. You know that was a race to set him up for this race. And again, with the scratch of Caracatado, he's going to be a very short price. He's got a new rider. That's not going to matter. Rafael Briano is going to ride Caracatado, so Mike Smith steps in to ride Campari. He's going to be a very short price and I think a likely winner of tomorrow's Sensational Star. With the scratch of Caracatado, the race really changes shape. I like a horse who's going to be up on the lead. Ain't no other. Has run well over the course for a good trainer in Steve Miotti. And the way the race shapes up with the small field, I think he's going to clear early and he might be tough to run down. He should at least be a fair price. He was a uh, uh, six to one in the original line. You won't get that because of the scratch. He's probably three to one, seven to two. And I thought if you're trying to upset Campari, a way to go. But Brad, I wouldn't argue with anybody who wants a single Campari. No, well, I would. Because you would. Yeah, I like your second selection. Okay. I like ain't no other. He's going to clear this field. It's a small field, and I think he can be gone. The price is a little bit. It's going to be soft. It's going to be half six to one, three to one or so. Mm -hmm. But I think he clears, and I think he can be long gone. I don't think Campari is quite as quick as ain't no other. But if Ain't No Other does stop, Campari's going to get first run. Campari, the classic route speed shortening up, will probably right. sit close. Right. But I'm with you. I think Ain't No Other is a true speed horse, and their chances to make the lead and hope he keeps on going. you got to keep on going. That's a sensational star. That is the fourth race on our card, second leg of the pick six. The luck pick six tomorrow here at Santa. We'll come right back, take a look at the remaining races in the pick six. I'm Carolyn Conley here in Hollywood, California on Hollywood Boulevard at Grauman's Chinese Theater. We're here for the HBO premiere of Luck. World of horse racing, but it's the world of people and horse racing, and the horses in the horse racing. I just thought it's this most amazing family that exists at the track. And then we look up, and we see the blue sky in the mountains, and then beautiful horses run past, and then we laugh some more. Oh my god, it's a total dream come true. And uh, it's bigger, better, and very excited. Because it's so intense, it's horse racing. It has changed my whole life learning how to ride, really. You go there at 6 in the morning and just watch those horses working out. If you can do that and still say, it's a great day, it's a great day. 
Kurt Hoover here along with Brad Free. And Brad, I was born and raised in Southern California, lived here my whole life. I rarely, if ever, make it into Hollywood, but I did make it over for the premiere at uh, Grauman's Chinese Theater and really enjoyed the show. Really a well done show. I know you're still going to wait and see the uh, opening episode on Sunday. Yep. But I thought they covered everything just right and captured the flavor of racing, gambling, and everything that's involved. You in know, I have yet to see, read or hear about one critical uh, piece of this of this uh, production. Everybody is just raving about it. Even critics who get paid to be critical. Yeah. And they even like it. So I'm looking forward to that on Sunday night at 9 o'clock. Even people who knock aren't knocking, which is very rare, especially <laughs> in this business. Let's move on to the pick six, get you back to Gulfstream Park. Sunshine Millions turf, $150,000 purse, a mile and one-eighth on the turf. Little Mike, Brad, uh, appears to be the, one of the class horses in the race, along with Teeks North. Those two, the short prices on the morning line. Yeah, I am going to live and die on the front end on Saturday at Santa Anita and at Gulfstream Park because I do like speed horses. It just happens to unfold that way, and Little Mike is definitely the speed of the Sunshine Millions turf. He will clear this field. He loves to win races. He's won uh, 8 out of 14 in his career. The one drawback, potential drawback, is that he is unproven at 9 furlongs. It's a distance he has only tried once. But just like the filly we saw in the race earlier, Little Mike is a front runner who fights back through the stretch. This is his comeback race. His first start in more than eight months. And here comes Yankee Fortune, another gray coming up on the outside of a speed horse. And Little Mike will refuse to let this horse get past. He's now won four of five on the Gulfstream Park turf course. He's the speed of the field. I think he clears, and I think he's gone. He's the 8-5 to five favorite on the morning line. He could go shorter because after him, you really have to reach a little bit. If you do want to reach, go down to the rail. Number one, Slew's answer. He runs big fresh. This will be his first start since November. He's lightly raced. He's only started seven times. He's won four of them. He's a gelding by Ghost Zapper, and I think that his best races might still be in front of him. But so will Little Mike. And Little Mike is the horse to catch in the Sunshine Millions turf on Saturday. And I think Little Mike is long gone. Little Mike, uh, one of the horses coming to some good races, Teeks North, I thought was the class of the race, Brad. Do you include him on a ticket? No, I don't. No. I'm, my ticket's going to be very, very small in this uh, in. Gulfstream Park race nine. We'll talk about that in a minute, but there will not be too many numbers on that uh, slot. Let's move on back to Santa Anita Park. The Crystal Water race has kind of undergone a remake this year. This race used to be a turf race run in March. Now it's a main track race run in late January on Sunshine Millions Day. This is a good field. A race I thought could fall a lot of different ways. Field of six set to go. 31st Street comes off a good one over the track. Is the two to one choice. I'm going to go elsewhere though. It's a luck pick six. Julio Canani is supposed to win a race. The Turo Escalante character in luck is modeled on Julio Canani. John Ortiz did such a great job. I said they could have just saved a salary and had Julio play himself. I mean he captured all the nuances, good, bad, and indifferent of Julio Canani. Julio Canani trains Holiday Road, a horse he claimed for $25,000. Comes off a very nice effort last time out. This was back December 10th at Hollywood Park. Fresh and been pointed for this race. Let's take a look at his last start. Garrett Gomez rode him on this occasion. This was on the turf at Hollywood Park, an allowance race. He splits horses here. I thought he won in hand. You watch him when he makes the front. This horse is a bit of a quirky horse. I thought he actually pulled himself up just a little bit, and Gomez had to get after him. Uh, Gomez fits this horse very well, but obviously Garrett is on the sidelines. I think a more than capable replacement. Rafael Beirano picks up the mount on Holiday Road. He's the second choice at 5-2, to two, and with the right kind of trip, I think he'll be tough to beat. Fresh and dangerous with Beirano for the Crystal Water. For my second choice, a horse I've always liked, Spud Spivens. He's back in with California Breds. He's run well over this racetrack, and I think with the presence of Macho Dorado in the race, the pace is going to be realistic. I really like the fact Mike Smith rode him last time and rides him back and got familiar with him because he, too, is a little bit of a quirky horse to ride. He kind of drops back and makes that one late run. And I thought if the pace sets up right, I give a chance to Spud Spivens to come running late for old Henry, Henry Moreno, at a price of 9-2. to two. And I thought, Brad, a race, if you can afford it, it's got all written all over it to yeah, me. It sure does. Even the sprinter on the bottom, Macho Dorado, who you referred to as the likely mm -hmm. pace setter, he has a chance to possibly steal it. You know, you talked about Holiday Road and how Rafael Beirano is filling in for Gary Gomez. Rafael Beirano is a terrific rider, but... This horse is a tricky horse to ride, and if Gomez was aboard, I think he might be a single. But he is he need, requires some finesse, and the, Bear Rano's unfamiliarity with Hol Holiday Road is a potential challenge. It's a fifth race on the card here at Santa Anita, right in the heart of the pick six. We've got two races left on the luck pick six. We'll come right back and take a look at those to the Valentine Dancer Stakes, and we'll get to Gulfstream for the Classic.
premiere of Luck on Sunday night on HBO. Nine o'clock. Series kicks off. First episode, Sunday night on HBO. And we are taking a look at the Luck Pick 6. Three races from Santa Anita. Three races from Gulfstream Park. Brad, we are two-thirds of the way there. we got the Classic and the Valentine Dancer left. First up to Sunshine Millions Classic. A field of seven go a mile and a one-eighth for a $400,000 purse. Turbo Compressor, the morning line favorite at two to one. Yeah, and he's a good horse, and he won by 10 lengths at Calder in November. But there's another horse that I like a little bit better, and he's a lightly raced four-year-old. His name is Adios Charlie, and he was always supposed to be a good horse. They bought him for $400,000, and he has really done nothing wrong in his career. He started six times. He's grade two placed. He's won three races, finished second three races. He has speed for a forwardly placed trip. He has run well at a mile and one-eighth. That was around one turn at Belmont Park. So the two-turn distance at Gulfstream Park is a question mark. But when you take a look at Adios Charlie's comeback race, you're going to like what you see. This is a very good son of Indian Charlie. And this is his comeback race. This was his first start since July. And he is going to win as easily as a horse can win. This is a horse who finished second in the grade two Dwyer and the grade two Peter Pan. He won the grade two Jerome. This was his first start since July. And he won very comfortably. comfortably. Trainer Stanley Huff has him going back in great guns. He's in form, he's stretching out, and he'll always get a good trip because of his tactical speed. And I think that this son of Indian Charlie has a lot of upside to him if he can stay together and string together a campaign. All he has to do on Saturday afternoon is get the mile and one-eighth around two turns, and if he does, he can win. But there are a couple other horses in this race that have a look. One of them's trained by Bill Mott. The other one's trained by Todd Pletcher. The Bill Mott trainee is Ron the Greek. He blew away his rivals his last two starts, proven at the distance. And then Todd Pletcher trains the favorite turbo compressor. And you have to respect both these horses. And I would suggest using all three, Audios Charlie, Ron the Greek, and turbo compressor in some way, shape, or form. The only contender I'm going to throw out, and I might be living dangerously here, is Mucho Macho Man, who I think is just perhaps slightly overrated. One thing I really like, Brad, about Adios Charlie is the spacing of the race. Off a big race like that, off a lay, if you don't want to come back too quick, the horse had six weeks, you look at his work tab, and Stan Huff has spaced his works every six, seven days. I think the timing of the race is perfect for him off that comeback race. It totally is, and it, it suggests that this has been the target for yeah. Adios Charlie all along. Florida bred, running for 400000 bucks. Let's get back to California and wrap up the pick six. Here at Santini with the Valentine Dancer. All right, scratches in this race. Number six, Kayana. Number seven, Unzip Me. We're scratched this morning. They will not run. I also spoke to trainer Brian Corner right before we started the show. He is going to scratch number four, La Sombre. So La Sombre will not run. Kayana will not run. Unzip will not run. So those three are out. Officially, the first two, La Sombre, will be out tomorrow. With all those scratches, I think this race sets up perfectly for Halo Dolly. Now, again, because of the scratches, she's going to be a much shorter price. She, I think you're looking at 6 to 5, 7 to 5 at best on Halo Dolly. Comes off a good prep race and no condition allowance went up at Golden Gate. She won a cowbred stakes last summer at Del Mar. Joe Talamo is one for one. Let's take a look at that stakes win down at Del Mar because it's the last time she ran against these kind of horses. This was a restricted stake, the Solana Beach, $100,000 purse, very similar field, very similar type of race. That was at a mile on the turf. This is also a mile on the turf. To me, it's a replay of this race. I think Halo Dolly gets a very good trip. She's tractable. She can stay close if she has to. Talamo rode her at Del Mar, so he's familiar with her, and I think she's going to be awful tough to beat at a short price in tomorrow's Valentine Dancer. Now, if you're looking for us to run under her in the exact or the trifecta at a big number. I thought Ben Scorey down at the bottom for trainer Sean McCarthy had a look at getting a piece. I don't know if she can win, but I think she might run on and pick up some pieces at a fairly big number. This is her first time routing. Often, that will be a horse's best race routing, the first time to get around two turns. Best of all, she'll be a big price. She gets Brees Blanc, and she'll be finishing. But Brad, for me, it's Halo Dolly and the rest in the Valentine Dancer. Well, you know, I, I like Halo Dolly. I respect her, but I like the filly who beat her mm -hmm. the last time they met, and that's Ontari's World. Both these uh, veterans have been based in Northern California. They have both run well against similar company, and I'm going to lean the other way, but I would have to use both of them in this, in this spot. As for Unzip Me, I just want to mention her real quick, uh, Kurt. Unzip Me is entered back on Sunday, and mm -hmm. she will come in handy as a potential pick six single in the Wishing yeah. Well stakes. She'll be heavily favored on Sunday afternoon, race eight. The Wishing Well, <coughs> excuse yeah. me, named after the mayor of the dam of the great Sunday silence. That's on Sunday when we have that $239,000 pick six carryover. But first up Saturday, guaranteed pool a quarter million. 
mandatory payout, no consolations. You got to pick six. Brad, how are you going to how are you going to design your ticket, and how much difference is making a dollar ticket as opposed to we're used to making two dollar pick six tickets? Well, you know, I think it's going to make a lot of handicappers a little bit lazy because you're going to say, oh, well, I'll just spend more money and use more <laughs> horses. But I don't want to do that. And if I use every horse that's on that graphic in front of you, this ticket would cost three hundred and twenty-four dollars. <throat> I don't want to spend $324, but I will spend $60, and here's how the ticket lays out. I'll use two of them in leg A, Speakeasy Gal and Unbridled Humor. Ain't no other. The speed horse coming down the hill as a key horse. If he loses, I need Campari or Red Defense. I'm living or dying with Little Mike. I think he's a standout single in the Sunshine Millions turf at Gulfstream Park. Now we go to the Crystal Water, and we go Holiday Road and I will use a backup ticket using all others. Kurt, you said that might be a race mm -hmm. in which to use all of them. <clears throat> I agree. But then we get down to the Sunshine Millions Classic. Once again, Audios Charlie a key with Turbo Compressor and Ron the Greek on backup tickets. And then finally ending it out with Longshot, Warren's Got Game, Ontari's World, and Halo Dolly. Check out DRF Ticketmaker. It helps you construct tickets efficiently, economically. You can turn a $324 ticket into a $60 affordable play. $1 is the basis for the wager, so it's a $1 ticket. Again, it only pays to the most winners, six or five, whichever is the most. No consolation, so it does pay out on Saturday, and the carryover from Friday goes to Sunday. Now that I've confused you, I'll confuse you even more with my pick six ticket. If you've seen the uh, pilot of luck, you'll understand this. If you haven't, too bad. Wait till Sunday, you'll figure it out. This is my pick six for the luck pick six tomorrow. Tomorrow. You can see I'm going to go two by two by two by three by all by one. That's going to be the ticket on the luck pick six. One single, a couple of doubles, and then a buy race. Okay, kick it off. I think in the Florida races, class completely stands out in the two turf races. Horses who have been facing graded company dropping in with Florida breads. I like that angle a lot. So I'm going to take Unbridled Humor and Roma Saka, the two class horses dropping down. Second leg, ain't no other and Campari. I really like Campari, but ain't no other is the horse that if he beat Campari, you're going to really inflate the payoff on this pick six. Back to Florida again. I think on class, Teeks North, a little Mike Tower over the field. I think you only need those two. Back to San Anita. Though I like Spud Spivens at Holiday Road, I respect 31st Street. He won huge over the track. He's going to get a nice trip, and I don't want to get beat by him, so I'm going to use one more horse there, three in leg D. Back to a Florida, the uh, classic. I thought it was an all. There's one or two horses to me that appear over match, but I'm not going to leave off one or two for a few bucks. All in the classic. Then I'm going to liver diet with Halo Dolly as a single in the last race for a dollar. This is an $84 ticket. So that's an $84 ticket. Two by two by two by three by all by one in tomorrow's luck pick six. So, Brad, I think we're in agreement on a couple races. The all of one mm. race, uh, taking a stand and singling a couple horses. And I think a lot of these races kind of boil down to a couple contenders. You know, when you get to, into these state uh, cow, cow bread and Florida bread stakes races, class definitely tells. Mm. And these horses who've been banging heads in graded stakes company, when they run in restricted races, they are often standouts. You sometimes want to be creative and try to beat them. <clears throat> but essentially... The best horses end up, end up winning these races. I know when I was handicapped, the more I looked, I kept saying, I'm just wasting my time. Yep. These, these <laughs> class droppers stand out. They're graded stakes horses against non-graded stakes horses. We'll see what happens. Should be a good day of racing. First post is 12 noon. And, Brad, another thing I like about this bet, I, the $1 is fine. I oh. love the mandatory payout, and I like the quick action. It's like the Magna 5. Hour and a half, it's done. Yeah, an hour and a half. It starts at 110 Pacific, 410 Eastern. It'll be done in an hour and a half, and we'll sink or swim in that short period of time. Also got the grade one Santa Monica tomorrow as part of this 10-race card at San Anita. First post at 12 noon. Luck pick six, three from California, three from Florida. Hope to see you out at the track tomorrow. For Brad Free, I'm Kurt Hoover. Thanks for falling off the edge with us here on HR TV.